Yo, what's up disc jockeys? Welcome to BeginnerDJLessons.com My name's Phil, today I've got a brand new camera angle for you just to keep things fresh and today I'm talking about a subject that I get asked about all the time which is how I organise my folders or crates in Serato for when I go and do DJ sets. Let's do it! Hey guys, so here's the thing. I've actually already recorded this video once um, and I uploaded it onto my computer yesterday and I went to edit it this morning and I was always editing it. I wasn't happy with it. And here's why. People ask me all the time about how I structure my folders or my crates in Serato for when I go and do DJ gigs. And yesterday I just opened my laptop and I talked about how I organize them. I showed you guys how I organize all my music. And as I was editing this video, I thought to myself, there's so many people out there who are going to be complaining about this video, saying, I don't know how to organise my music files very well. They're not uh, labelled very well. They're just bad structure. And I thought, I'm just going to re-record this entire video with a giant disclaimer and an explanation at the beginning, which is this. Everybody needs to organise their music in a way that makes it easy for them to get to the music they need to get to when they're playing the type of event they're playing. Biggest generalisation I've ever made in my life. But that is the most important thing that you guys need to take from this video. If your music file is structured in a way that makes no sense to anybody else, and it looks like a complete mess, that you have got a full dance floor all the time, and when you have a song in your head you want to play, you can get that song instantly, and it works for you. You have got a better structured uh, set of crates and playlists than another DJ who's got it all alphabetically ordered, subfolders that are BPM and key of track, who can't do that. That is the main thing I want to tell you. This is the biggest disclaimer. So in this video, I am going to show you how I structure my playlists, but it's important to know that that works for me. And even if it doesn't look like the most technically structured playlist, that doesn't matter. You see, you structure them on what kind of audience you are, you have in front of you and what kind of DJ you are. It's really important, this, guys. What kind of events do I do most of the time? Weddings, corporate events. They're the events I get paid to do. Now, here's what I want to say. If you are a big house music DJ and you have a big club night every week and it's just house music, well, that's amazing for you because you can just go, uh, here's a folder of my favourite house music, here's slower tempo house music, faster tempo house music, here's big room house, here's Moubaton. You can just substructure all your playlists around house music. And it kind of makes it easier. You could say, I'm going to sub... I'm going to create folders for different um, BPM or different energy levels. You could do it like that and that could work for you. But here's how I work as a DJ. I will do events where they're not just a one genre event. So I could turn up and I could have people who are 16 years old all the way up to 82 and they're all in one room and they all want to have a dance at some point in the evening. Okay, so those are the kind of events that I'll turn up and do. So how do I DJ? I'm a very visual DJ. I will look at who is on the dance floor and I will take a stab in the dark at the kind of music I think they're gonna like. And if I'm wrong, I will change it about a bit until I work out what I realize they really like and then I play more of that music. That's all I do as a DJ and as far as I'm concerned, that is what makes a good DJ, is somebody who can judge the people who are on the dance floor, play the music they like and then when you've got the music they like, play more of it. Now the interesting thing is, at a wedding, this will morph throughout the evening. So let me give you some examples. I might start off the evening and I'll have a group of 40 to 50 year old women on the dance floor all having a dance. I'm not going to play Avicii. I am going to play Rod Stewart, Motown, Stevie Wonder, that kind of stuff. Because I look at them and I go, 
I've DJ'd enough times now that I know a group of middle-aged women like that are probably going to like dancing to that kind of music. So I will have a folder for that kind of age category, which I'll dive into, Motown folder. I'll get some of those songs and I'll put them on. Now, they may like the music, in which case, great. I'm in my folder that's got all that kind of music so I can just keep going for as long as they like. I can go all night if I want, if it's just that group of people. But they might not like the music. So, I'm gonna play something that else I think they may like from my experience as a DJ. Now, I'm not gonna go from Motown to thrash metal. I'm going to go, okay, so they don't like that, let's try something slightly more modern, let's try some pop music instead, so I'll put on some modern pop music and see if they like that. And okay, maybe they didn't like that, well okay, well maybe what I'll try is some old school rock and roll, like status quo. Ah, finally, I found it, they love status quo, now I've got a whole folder of old school rock and roll music that I can play to keep them happy. This is my thought process when I'm DJing, and this is why it's so important for you guys to understand the way I've organized my crates because my crates work for me and my audiences that I play out to and my psychology when I'm DJing. And when I have a group of people on the dance floor who like a certain type of music, I can dive into a folder full of that kind of music. And just to give you a few other examples, it works across the board. If I've got teenage girls on the dance floor, I will have a folder for recent pop music. That's the kind of stuff I'll play. That's the kind of stuff I think they're going to like. If I've got all the dads on the dance floor, I'm going to go into old school rock and roll. If I've got some kind of young kind of 25 to 35 modern looking people. I'm probably going to play some history, some old school R&B, some maybe some recent pop music. Remember guys, a good DJ, in my opinion, is someone who can look at the audience they've currently got on the dance floor, take a good guess at the kind of music they think they're going to like, and then play more of that music so you can keep your dance floor as happy as possible. And that is it, okay? That's all DJing is as far as I'm concerned. So, I'm now gonna run you through my crates and how I organize my crates. They're not well labeled. You're not gonna think they're the best structured playlists, but the reason they are the way they are is because when I have a certain group of people on the dance floor, I can dive into a specific folder and I can play all that music and I can keep going all night if I want to. The other thing that's really important to note is I never subcategorize any of my crates by BPM or energy levels or key of track or anything like that. The reason is because I'm the kind of DJ who likes to just get an idea and go with my idea. And sometimes I like to just browse and go, everything in this playlist is probably gonna work with this audience. So what song do I really like? And what kind of song would I want to listen to next if I was these people? So I just scroll through or have an idea in my head, I'll find the song and I'll put it in. I'm not one of these people who goes, oh, right, okay, well, first thing I need to do is double check the BPM and then I need to double check the key of the track. I've said this to you guys loads before and it's really important to know this. I DJ based on vibes and based on music that I like and music that I know from my knowledge has worked well. So I'm not really interested in BPM or key of track or anything like that. I go, these people love this track. I've got a group of dads, I've just played status quo and they loved every second of it. I know what I'm playing next, Chuck Berry. That's gonna go down well. I've done enough of these events to know that that group of men there are gonna absolutely love Chuck Berry. And that's it. So there's my giant rant. And with that, I'm going to show you my crates now. OK, guys, so as you can see, I've got a load of crates over on this left hand side over here. But they're just random crates I've made over time and I never really use any of them. They're just from little projects that I've done at different points. But here are some of the folders I will use. 80s and 90s. So if I'm at a wedding and someone comes over and goes, play something from the 80s. Yeah, sure, go into the 80s folder. Boom, I've got all that music, I can play 80s all night. Play something from the 90s, that very rarely happens, but if it does, I've got a couple of 
hits from the 90s I know people are going to like. This is my main folder, this is my main go-to, recent. I've got relaxing evening. Relaxing evening is in the evening, say 10, 11 o'clock. It's an event that people are just not really interested in dancing at. If you do weddings, you're gonna have events like this where 11 o'clock comes and the vibe, people just aren't feeling it. People just don't wanna dance. That does happen sometimes. So I've got a load of tracks here that I can just put on that are backgroundy kind of music because the people in my audience are more interested in talking. After the first dance, what happens at weddings a lot is there's a first dance and then everyone joins the couple on the dance floor for a couple of bangers, so a couple of really popular songs that everyone's going to know, and then everyone realises they're not drunk enough, then they go to the bar to get drunk, and then they come back on the dance floor like 10.30. Um, so this is just a load of bangers that I know, that everyone knows, and everyone likes dancing to, like Candyman or Shake It Off by Taylor Swift or Happy by Pharrell Williams very popular music that everybody knows. Kistery, this is throwback R&B music. Say I've got 25 year olds to 35 year olds who are young, modern looking kind of people, I will play Kistery, because like, most likely they're gonna like listening to this music. You know, you've got Missy Elliott, you've got Mary J. Blige, that kind of stuff. I've got f rock. So rock and roll, this is gonna be stuff like Queen, this is gonna be stuff like Status Quo, this is gonna be stuff like Chuck Berry, but I've also got a subfolder here called Indie. So this will be stuff like Blink-182, The Killers, or that kind of music. And guys, I know I'm using stereotypes here, but as a DJ, you will often use stereotypes. So if I've got people on the dance floor with long hair and tattoos, I'm gonna be playing kind of indie rock music to them, because it's most likely the music they're really gonna like. Family Big Room. So these are famous big room tracks that say I've got a packed dance floor and everybody's on the dance floor and everyone's just going mental. I'm gonna play some big room music that I know everybody's gonna know, popular songs that are in the charts. Avicii, Calvin Harris, that kind of music that I know everyone can get really excited to. Um, I've also got another one called Just Dance, uh, which is, again, just electronic music, but popular electronic music that everyone likes dancing to. Pop Dance, which is more like dancey tracks that are pop songs. So, Hey Ya by Outkast. It's not dance music, but you certainly would dance to it that kind of music, but it's pop music that everybody knows. Um, I've got slow dance, in case everybody wants to have a slow dance, obviously. Rap music, and I've got kind of throwback rap and more modern rap, depending on who I've got on the dance floor. In this folder here, I've also got things like 50s and 60s music, so if I've got grandparents on the dance floor, I know they're gonna like listening to the Beach Boys, Elvis Presley, ABBA you know, that kind of stuff. Motown music, this is perfect for the parents. And finally, another crate that I go into quite a lot is just simply in the charts. Um, now, depending on when you watch this video, a lot of this music may not be in the charts, but basically, I always think it's good to stay on top of the chart music and constantly have a lot of the chart music with you. So if I've got people like teenagers or early 20s, I'm gonna play stuff that's actually in the charts right now, music that I know they're listening to. And guys, I know I just gave you a quick run through of the crates I use, but really it doesn't matter what music I keep in what crate or how I organize my music. I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of the psychology you want to have when you're organizing your playlists. Think of it like workflow. Where can you put the music so you can find the music you need at the right points? That would be my top tip for you when it comes to organizing your tracks. Guys, if you have agreed with what I've said in this video and it's helped you at all, make sure to like the video because that's really helpful for me because my videos get more views then. And leave a comment if you've got anything to say on the matter yourselves. I'd love to know your opinions. Guys, if you're new to DJing and you've never DJed before and you don't know what anything on the DJ decks does, I've got a course that'll teach you everything you need to know for doing your first DJ gig. And finally, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel for weekly videos. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time. Bye!